welcome guys to today's tutorial we are doing biology paper one written on the 30th of july 2018 uh, let's quickly go to our first question question one let's quickly go to question one question one is saying the diagram shows a light microscope which labeled part support the objective lens and is rotated to bring the lens of desired magnification into position so for you to answer this question you have to know the parts of a microscope okay so the basic parts of a microscope you should know is this one here this one is called the eyepiece this one the one labeled c is called the stage and this one the one labeled d is called the mirror all right then these two are called objective lens and as you can see our two objective lens are attached to which part They're attached to part b therefore b is the answer for this question okay we go to the next question question two saying the diagram shows a cell as seen under an electron microscope okay the question as we come down here it's saying what type of cell is shown okay, before we even go to the multiple choice what are we seeing on this cell we are seeing in this cell that it has a cell wall this here is a cell wall okay we are also seeing um, this one to be the cell membrane the internal part we can also see the nucleus this one okay and then uh, some other internal parts there okay so um let us see a is saying an animal outer layer is a cell membrane no we discussed to say it's a cell wall animal cell no chromosomes no um plant cell presence of cytoplasm all right there's cytoplasm in there because this is cytoplasm the whole of this here is all cytoplasm right uh plant cell cell is visible so our answer is d okay now let me just go back to option c the reason why we didn't get option c is because cytoplasm is present in all cells so it can't be our choice because whether an animal cell or a plant cell they all have cytoplasm right we go to the next question which is question three question three is saying the diagram shows a freshly cut potato chip one chip is suspended in liquid m and another in liquid n so we are seeing these two chips here at the beginning all right and then and then um we are also seeing to say after two hours here we are having the liquid m and the liquid n here so as you can see this potato chip it has changed shape it has curled up okay uh the reason due to this is because this has lost water on the other hand the chip in liquid n has remained the same size all right so um well what would be the reason for this to happen okay so the only reason for this chip to lose water is if it is placed in a concentrated solution all right so that the concentration of water outside the chip is less than the concentration of water inside the chip so due to osmosis there will be an osmotic gradient which will cause the water to leave the tissue so our answer here would be a as you can see liquid m is concentrated just as i said then liquid n is pure water because even if water enters the tissue nothing would happen to the tissue because it can't burst due to its strong cell wall remember plant cells have strong cell walls all right we go to the next question so our answer there is a we go to the next question which is question four which of the following best describes the function of enzymes okay we have accelerate metabolic reaction breakdown food molecules catalyze digestion and to make biochemical reaction possible all right so before we answer this one we have to understand the meaning of um, enzyme okay enzyme is uh, called a biological catalyst all right so you can remember from chemistry to say a biological catalyst the um rather a catalyst is a substance 
that speeds up a chemical reaction. Okay, so as we have agreed to say, an enzyme speeds up a chemical reaction. So the answer here is to accelerate the, chem the metabolic reactions. All right. Yeah. Now these B and C cannot be our answers because they are just too specific. Enzymes do more than break down food molecules, which is just digestion. So these two are referring to digestion. Okay. And to make our chemical reaction is not our answer also because these chemical reactions always occur with or without enzymes. They are only faster with the presence of enzymes. Okay. We go to question five. Which combination of chemical elements is present in a protein? So we know to say a protein has carbon, has hydrogen, has nitrogen, and has oxygen. So our answer should consist of all these three, which is d all right we go to the next question question six which of the following which of the following people need a lot of carbohydrates in their diet all right so we have to ask ourselves what do carbohydrates do before we answer this question all right carbohydrates these are energy giving food so in other question in other words the question is saying which of the following people need a lot of energy all right so we have a lactating mother, um, a malaria patient, a manual worker, and a sedentary worker. All right. Let me just comment on a sedentary worker. Maybe the English might not be a bit clear. A sedentary worker is just a worker who usually spends most of their times in offices. Okay. They they usually don't use much energy for their work. All right. On the other hand, we know to say a manual worker is the opposite of a sedentary worker. These are workers who use the much of their strength in order to do their jobs all right so our answer is manual worker okay we go to question seven question seven is saying which of the following correctly shows a plant nutrients and its function all right so here our answer is d sulfur forms the part of the chlorophyll molecule remember from from your work from your work in class you know to say sulfur is important for formation of green pigments in plants those big green pigments are called uh, chlorophyll molecules all right so that's why we are saying sulfur is our answer okay question eight question eight is saying the diagram shows an internal structure of a leaf all right uh, then the question is saying which labeled part is the rate of photosynthesis highest on a sunny day okay so when we look at this structure we know to say a can't be the answer because it lacks as you can see there there are no chlorophyll all right it lacks chlorophyll and the same is for d d also doesn't have chlorophyll so that's why d can't be our answer all right but if we the contenders are b and c all right so as you can see the cells in b are tightly packed okay they are the palisade layer they are tightly tightly packed okay while the spongy layer here they are not as tightly packed all right so as you can see because of this tight tightness of of layer b we'll find that they will produce more photosynthesis and that's our answer is b all right we go to the next question Question nine, which says, what type of nutrition is uh, carried out by rhizopus muca? Okay, so the other name for rhizopus muca is bread mold, bread mold, and uh, the the nutrition in bread mold is just saprophytic nutrition. All right, it's where digestion occurs outside a an organism. All right. Um. Question then is saying the diagram shows a skull of a herbivore. What type of teeth are represented by B and Q? Okay, this being a herbivore, we know to say herbivores do not have canine teeth, so we are found to say A and B are out. All right, so we go for C and D. All right, and we know to say molars are found at the end this part here what premolars are found at the 
beginning all right just after the diastema this part here so our answer should be c okay um we go to question 11 all right question 11 is saying the diagram shows a virus mm, the question is setting in which of the labeled structures are amino acids and glucose absorbed and transported all right so of course we know to say the transport of uh, glucose and uh, amino acid is done by the blood capillaries while the transport of fatty acids and glycerol are done through the lactive so our answer here is blood capillaries which is b okay b then we go to our next question which is question 12. the diagram below shows the structures of a human line okay this is like a zoomed in structure and a air sac all right the the question is that at which point is the oxygen concentration lowest so as we can see here we are seeing that oxygen as we are breathing in oxygen comes in here all right um from there we have blood also coming in here through air it diffuses then it leaves the the lung to the heart through c all right so now the question is that which of these points do we have oxygen concentration lowest all right so you remember this part here the blood which is coming in here is deoxygenated blood all right so our answer here would be a okay we go to question 13 question 13 is saying glucose is an energy source needed for blood processes to occur okay here we have our glucose as you can see our glucose and the question is that which what process are represented by x and y okay so x here you know to say once glucose mixes with oxygen once these two guys mix you have respiration all right so it's either this one or this one let us check now for y what processes do you think occurs in organisms all right because here it's saying body processes it's not referring to plants or animals okay so that's why we can't get the answer to be photosynthesis we're going to get the answer to be growth the other reason why we can't get the answer to be photosynthesis is because remember the photosynthesis we should have carbon dioxide and water mixing but we don't have those two here so our answer here is c okay so we go to the next part question 14 question 14 is saying which of the which of the following forms of drug abuse leads to the highest risk of infection with human immunodeficiency virus hiv okay so here we may not even be concerned about this but in the way in the mode of which they are gotten in mode of intake into the body okay so you can see this mode of is smoking this mode here is smoking this mode here is drinking this mode here is injecting and remember injections are the primary cause of hiv infections remember when your friend uses a sharp needle you don't even know if he or she is infected you also use the needle so if that person is infected once you use the very needle you are also infected so our answer here is d okay our answer is d we go to our next question the diagram below shows a protometer okay this whole thing here is a protometer and a protometer is just a device that measures the rate of transpiration okay so the question is saying which of these factors will cause the fastest movement of air bubble in the direction shown so this is our air bubble here and it's moving in this direction okay now this question because this measures transpiration so in other words it's saying which of these factors would increase the rate of transpiration okay so transpiration is as same as or should i say the factors which affect transpiration are similar to the factors which affect evaporation if you want to put it in that manner so decrease in temperature no we know transpiration will reduce decrease in wind speed no we know transpiration will reduce increase in humidity it's also no transpiration will reduce but increase in light intensity 
this will be our answer because once we increase the light intensity even the stomatas of the leaves will be wide open so they will, that will allow more water to leave the plant all right we go to question 16 it is saying mary has a blood group a which of the following is true about mary's blood um antigen we have antigen on the red blood cell and antibodies in the plasma okay so red um, rather blood group a has antigen a and blood group b has antigen b all right then blood group a b has antigen a and b and blood group o has antigen has no antigen rather okay so since it is a our answer would be antigen a and to have antibodies for b so our answer is a okay we go to question 17 the table below shows some of the blood vessels and the direction of blood flow in them which blood vessel is the pulmonary artery all right so the question is that which blood vessel is the pulmonary artery so whether this question the best way to ask a to think of it is like they're asking which one of these blood vessels is an artery right because whether pulmonary artery or aorta they have the same characteristics just once if once if they are arteries they have the same characteristics okay so we know as characteristics of arteries they have very thick muscles a narrow rumen, okay and they always transport blood away from the heart so our answer is one or which is a in this case okay we go to question 20 sorry to question 18 rather i'm way ahead of my numbers sorry um question 18 is saying the diagram shows a human kidney and its blood supply all right compared with the blood vessel in w which what the blood vessel in x has so you will think to say blood vessel w is a renal artery and x is a renal vein all right so as blood is entering here remember it should because it's coming to the kidney it should have more oxygen and because it's coming to the kidney also it should have more urea and as it is living through x should have less oxygen and less urea urea goes to the fact that um it is it is removed through waste through urine and the blood goes the fact uh, sorry the oxygen in the blood goes the fact that this the tissue in the kidney also wants to respire so x has less urea and less oxygen so our answer here is a you see less urea less oxygen okay we go to question 19 a diagram shows the part of the human skin what function of layer p what is the function of layer p you know this is the fatty layer or adipose layer okay and uh, the main function of fat in humans or in animals is to insulate the body from losing heat so it's for insulation or insulation against the cord so our answer here is a okay yay we are halfway okay we are at question 20 halfway done right okay which hormone is responsible for regulating water in the human body all right so we have adrenaline of course this is not the answer adrenaline we know to say it's for fight and flight action it's usually released when you are frightened or in danger uh glucagon and insulin these two guys they work uh, antagonistically they work against each other they usually they work with uh, the blood supply in terms of um, glucose one provides glucose in the body the other one removes glucose in the body which is glucagon provides glucose in the body and um, insulin removes glucose in the body all right so our answer here is antigelatic hormone which absorbs the blood which rather um, regulates water in the blood okay so these two guys glucose this guy here flight or fight action antidiuretic hormone works with water all right we go to question 21 what are the physical effects of 
heroin all right um heroin has this effect of lowering your breathing rate okay so mm, as we are seeing here it reduces the breathing rate um and also causes anxiety so answer would be c all right question 22 the diagram shows a section through the human eye what happens when muscle p contracts so what happens when muscle p contracts the lens becomes okay so we have um this eye right and then this muscle p is called the serially muscle and uh, this guy here in the middle here this guy is called the suspensor ligament so these guys here are kind of antagonistic all right they are antagonistic muscles so what happens is that once this guy contracts okay once this guy contracts we know to say the lens becomes thicker because once it contracts it pushes the eye the it pushes against the suspensor ligament the suspensor ligament becomes slackened and the lens becomes thicker once the lens becomes thicker it um it it focuses on nearby object so our answer here is a okay our answer here is a we go to question 23 the diagram shows a part of a vet vertebral column what are the parts of what are the parts labeled x y and z okay so we have x y and z you know this is your spine and this guy here is just the spine cord all right z is the neural spine and x is the sternum sorry centrum okay so we are having y let us start with x x should be the centrum all right then we know to say y should be the spinal cord and z should be the neural spine so our answer here should be b okay we go to question 24 question 24 is saying the diagram shows two stages in the growth of plants exposed to light which one light from one of the box okay which labeled part is the effector which labeled part is the effector uh okay which which why does the plant grow in this direction otherwise not in this direction okay it's due to some chemicals in the plant at the tip of a plant called auxin okay these are found at the tip of a plant so if you see the tip of the plant is at this point here so our answer would be c all right mm, question 25 says the diagram shows the longitudinal section through a root which one is the region of cell division all right cell division okay we have this vesicular bundle we have the cap which protects the shoot as it is growing then we have this two part here region of elongation which is b and the region of cell division which is c so region of cell division is c our c right there we go to question 26 the diagram shows a longitudinal section of the seed all right um which labeled structure would show the greatest loss of dry mass during the first week of germination okay so when you look at the seed right this guy here grows into the shoot it becomes a tree which you are going to see or the plant you're going to see in this seed here this part of the seed rather the part a is a food storage like a stomach of the seed so as the seed is using up the the food as it is growing it uses up the food in a and as a result a would reduce in size so our answer here is a okay we go to question 27 question 27 is saying which of the following is true regarding vegetative propagation 
it occurs naturally and artificially and produces genetically identical plants? Yes, true. It occurs naturally and artificially producing genetically different plants? No. Ge vegetative propagation cannot produce genet genetically different plants because um, the reason being is that genetic, um, once plants are produced through vegetative propagation, they like they like um they like gametes they don't use gametes and then once they don't use gametes they, there is no genetic mix up you know the, the mix up which causes a child to be slightly different from the parent there is nothing like that so that's why once a plant or an organism which grows from vegetative propagation it looks exactly the same like the parent so it it is like a, a clone so to say okay so our answer is a okay um of course it occurs both naturally and artificially that's why c or d can't be our answer uh question 28 is saying the diagram shows a longitudinal section through a flower which process occurs when pollen is transferred from x to y x is the anther and y is the stigma and we know to say the transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma is pollination so our answer here should be pollination okay which is c okay we go to question 29 okay question 9 is saying question 29 is saying the diagram shows the structure of the fruit in pea plants what method of food dispersal what method of dispersal is illustrated in the diagram okay we can see this is our our flute all right and um, this flute here what happens is that once it is blown away because these act like its wings all right so once it is blown away by the wind it it, it remains afloat in the in the wind um rather it remains afloat in the air for a long time so here our answer would be d wind dispersal all right we go to question 30 the diagram shows the male reproductive system okay this is a male reproductive system in which structure are hormones that bring about secondary uh, sexual characteristics produced we can see the scrotum the penis there you can see the bladder and all that but we know to say hormone specifically testosterone is produced in organ d which which are um, okay d which is uh, the 